بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this video we discuss the three dimensional rectangular coordinate system and for that we start by recalling or reviewing the xy plane we recall the xy plane well it consists of really, two we take the plane it, it, uh, we just draw two ver perpendicular lines where they intersect at a reference point o which is which we call the origin and the horizontal line is called the x-axis and we denote it by just x, x-axis and the vertical line is called the y-axis y-axis so these two lines divide the plane into four, four quadrants any point in the plane, any point, take any arbitrary point can be described by two numbers a and B, A and B, where A is the distance from the projection, the x-axis to, to the origin, and B is the projection of B, the y-axis, okay, and then the distance of A. A is good the x-axis, the x-coordinate of the point B, and B is good the y-coordinate of the point B. This is what we have in the xy plane. We can think of the xy plane as a way to describe our movement in the plane. To go from one point to another point, from the reference point O to, the, to another point B. We can do this mathematically by movement, by moving horizontally and then vertically or to the right or left and then either back forward or backward this is one way to describe our movement mathematically if we are moving in in a plane again we can move to the right or to the left or and then forward or backward this can be described by two numbers we take the positive sign to indicate that you are moving to the right or forward and the negative sign to indicate that our movement is, going, is to the left or backward. This is the situation if we, move, if we are working or if we are moving in the plane. But in the real world, in the real world we don't only move to the right or left and then forward or backward. We have also one more direction in the real world, which is we can go either up or down. You can go either to the first floor, second floor, or to the basement. So in the real world, really, we have three directions. Right, left, forward, backward, and then upward and downward. This situation in the real world is described as follows, mathematically. So here we have, we have really, we have the, uh, we draw three perpendicular lines, three perpendicular lines. Perpendicular, they meet at a point, the origin, the origin, and they extend. Think of it as the floor, the floor, and then an axis, an extra perpendicular line. The floor will represent the plane, the XY plane, the usual plane, to describe our movement either to the right or left or forward or back. So I will call this the X axis. And I will call the other line the Y axis. This is the XY plane, exactly the XY plane. The extra one to signify the movement upward or downward. Well, the third line I will call it the Z axis. 
Z-axis. So I have now three perpendicular lines. Now a point in this space, a point, if we take a point in space B, it can be described really by three numbers, by three numbers. And we write them as at an ordered trebles. A, B, and C. What is A and what is B and what is C? Well, take the projection from, from B to the, onto the XY plane. Okay. So in the XY plane, it is just really A and B. This is A and B. Okay. And this is the number four, the number A, and this is the number And C is the number representing the movement upward or downward. Here, this is the corresponding value C. The first two numbers, geometrically or in terms of movement, represent the movement in the XY plane. Right, left, forward, backward along the positive x-axis or negative x-axis, along the positive y-axis or along the negative z-axis. Then th the third number, C, represent the move, the upward or downward movement along a new axis, which we call the z-axis. Going up or down, depending on the sign of C. So in space, in our real world, we need really three numbers to re to uh, disc uh, to re to identify a point or to locate a point these numbers are called similar to what was done in the plane well a is called the x coordinate of the point b is called the y coordinate and c is called the z coordinate the z coordinate we introduce now some terminologies in the space here we have we, the, we have the coordinate axes. We have the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis are called the coordinate axes. We have x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Another terminology is the coordinate planes. Coordinate planes. Each of these two axes will form a plane. So the x-axis and the y-axis together, they will form the xy plane. xy plane. can think of the xy plane as the floor, as the floor. The x-axis and the z-axis, they will form the xz plane, xz plane. And the y-axis and the z-axis will form the yz plane. And we can think of the xz plane and the yz plane as the walls, as the walls. So you have a floor and two walls. These coordinate planes, the three coordinate planes, divide space, divide space into eight parts. Eight parts. Each part is called an octant. Well, they divide, divide. Space into eight parts. Each part is called an octan, octan, or eight, eight octan. If you compare it to the XY plane, well, the X axis and the Y axis divide the plane into four quadrants. Okay. First, second, third, and fourth. And the quadrant are numbered in the counterclockwise manner. For these eight octants or eight parts, the first, the first octant, octant 
is the octant that is closest to us. Closest to us. Basically, it consists of the points x, y, z, where each coordinate is positive. So x is positive, y is positive, and z is positive. This is the closest one, closest octant to us. It is the first octant. What about the other octants? Well, there is no standard way of numbering them. So usually, we leave them as an unnumbered. So, but we have four. Above the floor, you have four octants. And below the floor, you have four octants. The main octant is the first octant, which is defined in this, in this manner. We go back to the coordinate planes again, x, y plane, and x, z plane, and y, z plane. And let's describe them in set notation. Now, if you take the x, x, y plane, x, y plane. It consists of the points x, y, z. What are the condi conditions on x, y, and z? So you are in the floor. x and y can take any real number. x can take any real number. So this notation r represents real numbers. y can take all real numbers. But in the floor, you are not going up or down. So z is always zero. Z is always zero. There is no upward or downward movement. So z equal to zero. So this is how to describe the x, y plane. For short or simply, or simply, just, since x and y are unrestricted, but z is restricted, we can just choose the, the last equation or the last condition. And the x, y plane, we can describe by the equation, equation z equal to zero. A simpler way to describe the x, y plane. In the same manner, the x, z plane, x, z plane consists of the points x, y, Z, what are the conditions in the coordinates? In the X, Z plane, you are on the wall. X and Z can take any real numbers. So X can be any real number. Z, uh, Z can be any real number. But Y, Y, on the Y, well, there is no, uh, there is no uh, right or left movement. So y is fixed as zero. There is no movement along the y-axis. So this is the set notation, the x plane, uh, description of the x z plane, or simply, or simply by the equation, we take the restriction, y has to be equal to zero. In a similar manner, we have the y z plane, y z plane, In set notation, it consists of the points x, y, z, where y and z are free. They can take any real number, y, any real number, z, any real number, but x equal to zero. So, or we can describe it simply by the equation x equal to zero. Now at the end, we, there is one, uh, one point that has to be mentioned about the terminology, dimension, dimensions. For that, just in math 001, we started with the number line, with the origin, and then the numbers, one, two, three, and etc. Minus one, minus two, and etc. So in the number line, in fact, each point, each point in the line can be represented only by one number. One number is needed. One number. One number.
When we go to the plane, the XY plane, this is the origin. Any point can be re represented by two numbers, A and B. So here, two numbers. In space, any point can be represented by three numbers. Three numbers. Three independent numbers. Two independent numbers. The x coordinate and the y coordinate do, do not depend on each other. The x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate, again, they do not depend on each other. The one number, the two number, the three numbers, okay. Usually in mathematics, we describe this line, the space, as one dimensional space. One dimensional. space indicating that really any any point in the on the number line can be described only by one number so you need only one number to do the description so we call the number line one dimensional space in the plane well a point can be, descri be described by two independent numbers so in that case we call the xy plane or any plane two dimensional space In the real world, the x, uh, x, y, z space, any point can be described by three independent numbers. So this space is called a three-dimensional space. Space. So this is this is uh, the origin of the word dimension. Dimension. So in the, our real world, there is, is, is really is a three-dimensional space. So we call it a three-dimensional space or three-dimensional coordinate system. So this is this is for this terminology. We give now one example on how to locate points in the three-dimensional space. So we have this example: plot the following points in a 3D space, P, Q, and R. So we draw the x, y, z space, or the three space, and they try to plot each point. We start with the point B. How to plot the point B with coordinates 1, 2, and 3? Well, the simplest way is this, to start with the first two numbers. The first two numbers represent the x and y coordinates. So the x, y coordinate, so you are in the plane, in the x, y plane, uh, plot the points 1 and 2 in the xy plane using the familiar way we know from previous courses. So in the xy plane, in the floor, you have x is 1 and y equals 2. So this is 1 and this is y equals 2. So this is the point. So in the floor, your location is here. x equals 1 and y equals 2. Now for the third uh, coordinate, it is the z. So you have to move now three units upward in the positive direction. Okay? So you go upward three units. So this is the point three. One, two, and three. Start with the xy and then move upward if z is positive or downward if z is negative. This is for the point B. For the second point, Q, 1 and minus 1, and 1 minus 1 and 4. So again, X in the XY plane, you have 1 and minus 1. So this is X equals 1, and this is Y equals minus 1. So we are here. In the floor, we are here. Now I have to move 4 units upward along the third axis. So you go up. So this is the point Q, 1, minus 1, and 4. For the third point, 2, 3, minus 3, again, in the XY plane, sketch 2 and 3. So this is 2 along the X-axis. This is a 3 
among the y axis so in the floor I am here so this is my location in the floor now z is minus 3 so I have to go 3 units down so this is 1 2 and 3 so this is this is minus 3 and this is the point so this is a q uh, r 2 3 minus minus 3 so to plot a point always start on the floor as if you were in the xy plane and then move upward or downward depending on the sign of the z coordinates let's consider uh, exercise one here describe the set of points x y z and three-dimensional space or for short 3d space such that z equals 2 well to describe this set it is better it is best for us to just write it in set notation so this is each the set this consists of x y z so I, I want to describe I want to describe set of points in 3d space x y z now I ask myself what are the conditions in x y and z if I check the question there is condi one condition on z z has to be always 2 what about x and y if there is no such mention about x and y it means x and y can, can, can take any real number they are free they can take any real number so in this case well I want to describe the set of points x y z x is the condition on x there is no conditions which is no restriction on us x can take any real number what about y again can take any real number what about the z coordinate well the z coordinate is always equals to so z equals to so this is each the description of the required set in set notation this means well an arbitrary point well can be take any x any y but the z coordinate is always two how to sketch such points how to sketch such points well if you start with the x y in the floor the point x y can be any point in the floor then I have to go two units up, two units up along the positive z axis. So any point in the floor x, y, then z equals two. You go two units up. So as if we are just shifting the x, y plane two units up. So the graph will be the following. This is the x axis, y axis, z axis. Take any point in the floor and then bullet or push it as two units upward. So start from the origin, I go two units. Any point here, I got two units and etc. So this will give me the following. Just shift the XY plane two units up. So this is the resulting set is just a plane. parallel to the xy plane and passing through well it is enough to find one point in the plane so I can take this point which is 0 0 and 2 0 0 and so the given set is just a plane parallel to the xy plane and passing through the point 0, 0, 2. In the graph, of course, the plane will extend all over. But here we are restricting our graph of the plane just in the first octal. But it will extend in all, in all directions. We we'll consider another uh, ex ex exercise too now. Describe the set of points x, y, z in 3D space such that x equals 1, y equals 3. 
Well, it is better just to write the set, the given set in set notation. So we need to describe the set of x, y, z. The set of points x, y, z. Now, what are the conditions on the x coordinate, y coordinate, and z coordinate? According to the question, x is always 1. So, these are the conditions x equals 1. And y, it is always a 3. And z, there is, no con there is no condition or there is no restriction. So, it can take any value. Z can take any real number. So, simply, well, this is consists of the points. X is always 1. Y is always a 3. But Z can take any real number. So, it is 1, 3, and Z. Z can take any real number. In the XY space, or in this space, let's see what are these points. How to locate such a point? Start with the xy plane, 1 and 3. So in the xy plane, this is 1, and this is a 3. So in the xy plane, I have 1 and 3. Then I have the z. z is a 3. So I can go up or I can go down. First floor, second floor, third floor, etc. Or basement and etc. For here, this will give me the following. If z is 1, I will just go up or down, or down, or down. For any point on this line, will have the co will have the coordinates 1, 3, and z, where z is any real number. So this set. It's just a line. Parallel to the z-axis. Parallel to the z-axis. And passing through. Passing. It is enough to find one point. I can take the point here, which is, which is 1, 3, in the floor, z is 0. So this is 0. 1, 3, and 0. So the description of the given set is just a line parallel to the z-axis and passing through the point 1, 3, 0. Now we consider the third uh, example. Describe the set of points x, y, z in a 3D space such that y greater than or equals 4. In set notation, it is the following set. We need to describe this set, x, consisting of the points x, y, z, in space. What are the conditions on x, y, and z? Well, y is greater than or equals 4. What are the conditions on x and z? They are any real number. They can take any real number. So x any real number and y any real number how to describe this set well here it is better just to concentrate on the x y coordinate first okay. so i will try to uh, describe these points just take the only the x y coordinates only and here we have x, any real number, but y greater than or equals 4. Try to describe this set in the xy plane. So in the xy plane, just this is the xy plane. x is any real number, so I can take any real number, but y has to be 4 and above. So there is y here, this is y, 4. It can be 4 or any larger number. So this is the for always 4. This is in fact the line y equals 4. And the larger. So really I have this. This part. This part. 
So in the xy plane, the set of xy such that x and r and y greater than or equals 4 consists of the points on or above the line y equals 4. On or above. This is the situation in the xy plane. Now when you go to space, I need the points in space. So this is the space. x Well, how to locate points in space? Still, I have to start with the xy plane. xy plane. So take the possible values of x and y. They are the same. x a nearing number, y greater than or equal to 4. So still I have the same region in the xy plane. So I take this and put it in the xy plane. So this is 4. And this is the line in the xy plane. which is the line y equals 4 in the xy plane. And all points above r, all points to the right of r. So this are all points. So in the floor, you are to the right of the line y equals 4. On and to the right. This is in the floor. Now what about the z values? Z is arbitrary. Sorry, here Z. Z is arbitrary. So it can take any value. So I can go up or I can go down. I can take the same region in the floor, just shift it up to any floor or shift it down. So in that case, I will get the following. I will get the following. Everything everything on the plane this is a plane now this is a plane plane y equals four. everything on the plane y equals four or to the right of it or to the right of it so all points all points on and to the right to the right of the plane y equals 4. We call this one a half space, a half space. We consider now example 4, describe the set of points x, y, z in a 3D space such that x squared plus y squared equals 4 and z equals 5. Here we start by writing our set in set notation. So it consists of the points x, y, z in a 3D space. What are the conditions on the coordinates I have for x and y? They are related by this equation x squared plus y squared equals 4 and the z coordinate is always 5. So z equals 5. And to sketch this, again, start with the sketching the points uh, with uh, the x and y coordinate together. Okay. So here I have the following. This is the x and y and z. If I restrict myself to the x and y coordinates and sketch these points in the floor, the xy plane, then I have x squared plus y squared equals 4. So these points form a circle, a circle of radius 2 and origin the 0, 0. So in the xy plane, so this is the center and this is the circle of radius 2. So this is 2 and this is, this is 2. If I restrict myself only to the xy coordinate, the points xy, I get a circle in the floor. A circle in the floor. But what is the condition in z? Z is always 5. So really, it will, I have to shift this circle to the fifth floor. To the fifth floor. So I go to 
z equals 5, z equals 5. And take this circle here. This is the circle. Okay. The same circle, the same circle, but in the fifth floor. A circle of central origin and radius to in the xy plane, you shift it five units up. You take it to the fifth floor. So this is the this is the, the graph here. So the graph or the set is just a circle of radius, radius to in the plane, in the plane, z equals 5. You shift it, so as if you are shifting the xy plane. Okay. With radius, center, center. The center is 0, 0, 5. 0, 0, and 5. The circle in the xy plane, the center was 0, 0. When you shift it 5 units up, you get 0, 0 and 5. The z coordinate will be 5. Okay. We'll consider uh, example 5. Describe the set of points x, y, z in 3D space such that z equals sine y and x equals 3. We we'll write the set, given set, in set notation. So it consists of the points x, y, z in the three space with the following conditions. The condition in x, x is always a 3. x is always a 3. And the relation between y and z, it is z equals sine y. We have z equals sine sine y. How to relate, how to graph this or describe this set? Here I have a relation between y and z. So maybe I should start with this relation here. Restrict yourself to the yz plane, to the yz plane. So this is the yz plane. This is the x axis, the x axis. So let's restrict ourselves to the y z plane. So this is plane, and I have z equals sine y. So really, on the y z plane, I have the points on the sine function y and z. So it is just the graph of the sine function. If I graph it on just one period, so this is. This is 2 pi, and this is pi. This is the graph of y, of z equals sine y in the yz plane, in the yz plane. But what about x? x equals 3. Here, in the yz plane, x equals 0. But I needed x equals 3. How to get x equals 3? Here, just I take the sine function and move it along the x-axis. Three units. Move it three, three units. Okay. Until you reach x equals three. So this is one, this is two, and this is a three. Okay. The graph will be something like this. Shift this three units along the positive x-axis. You will get, we will get the following. So this is the, the graph. Roughly speaking. So it is, so it consists of the sine function, but in the plane, x equals 3, x equals 3. So it is the sine function, or the sine curve, the sine curve, in the plane, in the plane, x equals 3, which is a plane parallel to the yz plane. So this is, this is the description of the given set.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this video we will discuss distances, midpoints and the spheres in the three dimensional space and in fact we will, we will see that really these notions are just generalizations of what we have in the two dimensional space or in the plane so let's just start with two points in space in the x y z space or in the three dimensional space p1 with the coordinates x1 y1 z1 and p2 with coordinates x2 y2 z2 well how to find the distance between these two points so the distance is a generalization of the distance formula in the plane okay so the distance between between p1 the given point and p2 is given by the following formula d for distance square root of we just subtract the coordinates corresponding coordinates so this is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared this is for the formula for the distance between two points in three space notice in the plane if we have just two points in the plane with x coordinate and y coordinate in the formula for the distance is exactly the same except the third term is not there okay in the plane in the three space we have the extra term the z, com the z component of the of the term okay. so this is for the distance how to find the distance between two points for the midpoints midpoints of the line segment of the line segment joining p1 and b2 so this is the line segment p1 and p2 and we need the point in the middle which is m for example this is h m let's call it m the midpoint is given as follows by this formula m for the midpoint we take the average of the coordinates so this is x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2 and z1 plus z2 over over 2 and again in the plane the midpoint formula is really similar you just have the x and y coordinate the third coordinate is missing in the plane so the formula here is a generalization of what we have in the plane this is for the distance and the midpoint for the sphere in three space it is really a generalization of circles in the plane and you will see really if in the definition of a sphere is similar to the definition in the plane so let's me just state the definition of a sphere for spheres what is a sphere a sphere a sphere is the set is the set of points x y z in a 3d space in a 3d space So it is a set of points whose distance, whose distance, distance from a fixed point, a fixed point, point x zero, y zero, z zero is a fixed number, a fixed number. Let's call it R. So this is the definition of a sphere. A circle is similar in two space. A circle is the set of points x, y. Was this in a two space whose distance from a fixed point x0, y0 is a fixed number R. So the definition of a sphere is just a generalization of the definition of a circle in the, in the plane. Now how to describe the sphere? 
by an equation. We use the given, we use the given definition. Here this is space, here just let me take the fixed point in space, x0, y0, z0, x0, y0, z0. So this is, just imagine it is a point in space. Well, I need to find all points in space whose distance from x0, y0 is r. So basically, I start from this, this point, fixed point. I go a distance r in all directions to get the required point. So if you do this in all directions, R, 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 and etc., you get something like this. Okay. So you go in all directions, right, left, backward, forward, up and down, all directions. So you get this sphere, you get this sphere. So if you have to describe this, this is sphere by an equation. Take a arbitrary point in the sphere, which is x, y, z. The characteristic property is that the distance from this point on the sphere to the fixed point is equal to r. So find the distance. The distance, square root of x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared plus z minus z0 squared equals r. So any point on the sphere satisfies this equation. Okay. If we square both sides, we get the following. x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared plus z minus z0 squared equals r squared. And this is the equation that we use to describe the sphere, to describe the sphere. Okay. The point x0, y0, the fixed point, is called the center, the center. Of the sphere. And the fixed number r is called the radius of the sphere. And if we compare the equation of a sphere and the equation of a, a circle in the plane, again, we'll see that there is an extra term, the, z, uh, the extra z term here. Without the z term, we get a circle. With the z term, we get, we get a sphere. So a sphere is just a, general, a generalization of the circles in, uh, in, in the plane. Now we illustrate what we explained by one, one, by one example. Find the equation of the sphere that has a diameter with endpoints P1 and P2. So what is required is to find the equation of a sphere. And for the equation of a sphere, we need two things, the center and the radius. So center and the radius. This is what is required to find the equation of a sphere. The given information here is that we have one diameter with endpoints P1 and P2. So this is a sphere and there is one diameter. So just Let's take, for example, this is H, the diameter. Let's assume this is the diameter, and this is P1 and P2. So this is the diameter, one diameter of the sphere, one diameter of the sphere. Well, how to find the center if we know the diameter, or one diameter of the sphere? Well, the center is natural to be H, the midpoint. M is the midpoint. This is H, the center. So the center of the sphere is just the midpoint of the line segment joining P1 and P2 or the midpoint of the, the given diameter. So the formula for the diameter is just take the average of the coordinates. So this is 1 plus 3, 1 plus 3 over 2, 0 plus 2 over 2 and 2 minus 1 over 2. And this equals the following. This is, 
2 and 1 and minus minus half uh, or half. This is the center for the for the for the sphere. What about the radius? The radius it is half the length of the diameter, half the length of any diameter. So I can find the distance from P1 and P2 and divide by R to get the radius. So first find the distance between P1 and P2 between P1 and B2, and this equals square root, use the distance formula, subtract the coordinates and then square. 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1, square, this is for the x coordinate, 2 minus 0 for the y coordinate, and minus 1 minus 2 for the z coordinates. Simplify, this is, this is 2 squared 4, 2 squared 4, th minus 3 squared 9, and this is root 17. root 17. This is the distance between the two points, the end points of the given diameter. The radius of the sphere equals half the distance between P1 and P2. So this is half the distance which is root 17 or just root 17 over over 2. Now with the center and the radius of the sphere we can apply the formula for the equation of the sphere. So equation of the sphere, equation of the sphere as x minus the x coordinate of the center 2 all square plus y minus the y coordinate of the center, 1 squared, plus z minus the z coordinate of the sphere, which is half, all squared. Equals the radius squared, so it is root 17, root 17 over 2, all squared. This implies x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus half square and this is 17 over 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 so this is the equation of the required sphere of the given sphere we consider now example one describe the set of points x y z in the three-dimensional space that are equidistant from the origin and the point zero four zero. So we need to describe these points with this with this with the given property. The key word in the question is the word equidistant, which means equal distance. Equal distance. So basically, we need the points in space x, y, z such that the distance from these points and the origin equals the distance of from these points to the second point, 0, 4, 0. Graphically, you have the three spaces, the following here. And they have the origin, O, and the second point, 0, 4, 0. 0, 4, 0. I need the points in space, x, y, z. Just take arbitrary point, x, y, z. I need to describe these points, x, y, z, with which property? Such that the distance from x, y, z to the origin equals the distance from x, y, z to the point 0, 4, 0. So this distance D equals this distance. So these points, I need to describe these, these points, describe them by an equation or by or in words. So to make to, to find the description, just find the distance between the point and the origin 
and the point and the, the second point, 0, 4, 0, and then equate them. So distance, distance from x, y, z to the origin equals distance from x, y, z to the point 0, 4, 0. 0, 4, 0. This is the main property that these points x, y, z satisfy. Now, apply the distance formula, how to find the distance from the, uh, to, from the x, y, z to the origin. It is the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared plus z minus 0 squared. Equal, well, the distance x minus 0 squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z minus 0 squared. This is the formula equating the two distances. Okay. Now we have to simplify, we have to simplify uh, this formula. So here you have square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals square root of x squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z squared. Square both sides, just to get rid of the roots, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals x squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z squared. Simplify further by cancelling any common terms. So I have x squared with x squared, they will go out. And z squared with z squared, again, they will go out. What remains is y squared and y, y minus 4 squared. Again, if I expand this, I get y squared minus 8y plus 16. If I cancelled y squared, I get 8y equals 16, and hence y equals 2. So this means the points x, y, z in space that are equidistant from the origin and the point, these points satisfy y equals 2, i.e. the y coordinate of this point is always 2. The y coordinate is always 2. Okay. So this will give us this, this point. It's always x and y. y is always 2. And z. Okay. x and z are arbitrary. x and r. z and r. So this is h, the set of points. Okay. Now this set of points, what does it form? In fact, y equals 2, it represents a plane, a plane, a plane, a plane, parallel to the xz plane, parallel to the xz plane, xz plane. And passing through, passing through, through, Just find one point with y coordinate equal to, for example, I can take 0, 2, and 0. So in this space, if I take this point 0, 2, 0, so this is the point in the middle between 0 and 4, which is clear that it satisfies the given condition, the distance here equals the distance here. Okay. Uh, this is a specific point. Okay. Now, what is the plane parallel to the xz plane and passing through this plane? So this point, this is h d plane. Just take this. Roughly speaking, of course. This is h the plane. Y equals y equals. So it is a plane parallel to the xz plane. Now let's uh, consider the following example here. Describe the set of points x, y, z in a 3D space 
whose coordinates satisfy the given inequality. So here we need, really, we have just, if we describe this set in set notation, so you have x, y, z, this is the set of points in a 3D space. This coordinate satisfies the following inequality, x squared plus y squared plus z squared greater than 4, 4x. Four how to describe this set? How to describe this set? Basically, we take the inequality and we try to simplify it. Okay. Uh, here, the, inequ the inequality, this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared greater than 4x. I will take 4x to the other side of the inequality. So this gives me the following. x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus z squared greater than 0. Now here, a square, a square, well, let me complete the square for an x by adding half the coefficient of minus 4, minus 2, square 4. So you add 4 to both sides. You get this is x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared plus z squared greater than 4. When we add 4 to both sides. Now this, the, I get the four. This is x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus z squared greater than greater than now the form of this inequality is similar than the given form here at least well this rings a bell okay if i have equal here if it is equal then this is just a sphere this is a sphere so here this is x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus z squared if it is equals 4, this is then this is H, a sphere. A sphere. A sphere with center. center. 2, 0, 0. 2, 0, 0. And radius equals 2. And radius equals radius 2. So this is if it is equal, but here I don't have, it is greater than, greater than 4. So in that case, these points will not form, will not form a sphere. It will form really the points outside the sphere, outside the sphere. If it is larger than 4, then we'll get the points outside the sphere. So if it is equal, I get the sphere. If it is larger, I get outside the sphere. If it is a smaller, if it is less than, I get the points inside the sphere. I can, so let me say here, so here, so this implies, so these points, all points, all points, outside, outside the sphere, with the center, Two, zero, zero, and radius, radius two. Okay. So this point, these points are, or uh, for these points form all points outside the sphere with center two, zero, zero, and radius two. Well, you can also see it in, in a different way if you want. If I take the same, the same, the same equation and take the square root of both sides with x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus z squared greater than 2 and then I can read this using distances this is the distance from the point x y z and the point 2 0 0 from the point x y z to the center so the distance from any point x, y, z to the center is larger than 2. This has to give us H all points outside the sphere. If it is equal, I get the sphere. This is according to the definition of the sphere. If it is larger, then I have to get H. I will get the all points outside the sphere. Let's consider the following exercise. 
find the equation of the sphere with center 2, 1, minus 4. It is tangent to the xy plane. Uh, well, we need to find the equation of a sphere. So, to do that, we need two things, center and radius. So, the center is given in the, in the statement of the question, which is the point 2, 1, minus 4, 2, 1, minus 4. And we need the radius. This is the missing information. To find the radius, we use the given information. We know that the sphere with center, this sphere is tangent to the xy plane. So the sphere is tangent to the xy plane. Well, it is, it is helpful in this case just to draw or locate the center of the sphere. So this is the xy Z space and Z. I have the center 2, 1, so this is, this is 1, and this is 2, and this is 1. So this is to locate it. I have, I have to work in the xy plane. So this is the point in the xy plane, it is 2, 1. Or the Z coordinate, I have to go 4 units down. So we go four units downward. Uh, this is the center. This is the center, which is uh, two, one, minus, minus four. This is the center. Well, so the I have the sphere with the center and it is tangent to the xy plane. Well, then it has to be below the xy plane. It would be something like this, for example. So I have, this is the xy plane, and I have the sphere. Okay, the sphere. It has to touch the xy plane. Okay. So, well, it should be now obvious what is the radius. So the radius will be this distance. This distance. This is h, the, the sphere. Tangent to the xy plane. So, the radius will be, well, this distance from the floor, the xy plane, to the center. This is 0, z equal to 0, and this z equals minus 4, okay. So, the distance is, is 4, okay. So, the radius is 4. The radius of the sphere is, is 4. Okay. Well, with the center and, this, uh, the, and the radius, the equation of the sphere, equation is, given by the following, it's x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus minus 4 plus 4 squared the radius 4 squared 4 squared which is just 60. So this is the equation of the of the required sphere. Let's consider the following problem. Find the intersection between the sphere and the plane z equals 1. So we have a sphere and a plane. And the plane z equals 1 is just the plane parallel to the xy, Z, the XY plane and passing through the point 0, 0, 1. So this is a sphere and there is a plane here. Well, we can guess really what is the what is the intersection. If you have a sphere and you cut it by a plane, well, the intersection it seems that it is a circle. But how to show this? How really to show this? This is H geometrically. To show this, usually you have two surfaces here. You have a sphere and a plane. If I want to find the intersection algebraically, then I have to solve. I have to solve the system. Solve the system x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus 2 squared equals 4 and z equals 1. Algebraically, finding the intersection is just solving a system of two equations. Well, how to solve a system of two equations? Just use what we know from orientation math, which is usually substitute one equation 
in another the second equation. Here the second equation is very simple. I can't substitute it in the first equation. Substitute, substitute z equals one in the first equation. Equation. When you substitute, you get the following x minus one squared plus y minus one squared plus now instead of z I write one one minus minus two squared equals four. Simplify so this gives us the following x minus one squared plus y minus one squared equals this is four this is minus one square one take it to the other side it is just one so we get the following x minus one square plus y minus one square equals three so the intersection is a circle okay a circle a circle with center one and one and radius square root of three the intersection between the sphere and the plane is a circle with center one one and radius root three but where is the what is the location of this circle is it in the xy plane or it is edge somewhere else well don't forget i am making the intersection between the sphere and the plane z equals 1, which is a plane parallel to the xy plane. So really the intersection is a circle in the plane, z equals 1. It is not in the xy plane, it is in the plane, z equals 1. So it is a circle in the plane, in the plane, z equals 1. Let's consider the following problem. Find the point in the sphere with the given equation that is the closest to the xy plane. So how to find the point in this sphere the closest to the xy plane? Here it is better to just sketch the, uh, sketch the sphere in space to see the closest point geometrically if possible. If I have the center, center this is one three and five and radius equals a three this is the center and radius of the sphere now let me look at the center in the space here so this is the x y z space x this is z and this is y okay. the center is again 1 3 5 I start on the x y plane 1 and 3 so this is 1 and this is a 3 this is a 3 1 2 and 3 this is a 3 okay. and now I have to go 5 units up in the positive direction so this is so this is the center center and this is five this is five so just i will concentrate now on the line passing the line passing is through the center and parallel to the z axis to this vertical line I know that this is the center now. What about the radius? It is a three. So from the center here, well, this, I have to go three units in all directions, but concentrate on this vertical line parallel to the z-axis. So the point in the sphere, I go from the center three units down. So when I go three units down, three, I reach this point here. Well, at the center, z equals 5. If I go 3 units down, I reach the point with z equals 2. 
So this is this point is on the sphere, and then this sphere will go something like this. Something like this. It will be something like this, okay, something like this, okay. Going up, okay. So this is the lowest point on the sphere. Lowest point. Point on the sphere. On the sphere. This is the lowest point on the sphere. Well, then, what is the closest point to the xy plane? Okay, this is the xy plane, it is the floor. Well, the closest point to the sphere is the lowest point of the sphere. The lowest point. So, this is the one, this is the lowest point. The, lo the lowest point is the closest point. Okay. Well, what are the coordinates of this point? Well, this the x and y coordinates comes from the center. 1 and 3. Notice this point is along the same line. So 1 and 3. So this is 1 and 3. I.e. the x and y coordinates of this point, the lowest point, are the same as the x and y coordinate of the center. And then what is the z coordinate? Well, it is h2. This is 2. So this is the this is the answer. So the closest point to the xy plane from the graph is really the lowest point okay, on the sphere, which is one, three, and two. And this is the answer. Okay.